Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting exponential equation. We have e to the power x on one side and 1 plus i on the other side. i is the imaginary unit whose square equals negative 1. So we have a complex number, 1 plus i, which is equal to e to the power x, and we're going to be solving for x values. So we're going to go into uh, the writing of this complex number in polar form, and then we're going to write it in exponential form, so on and so forth. We'll do a little bit of trigonometry here, and then we're going to solve our equation. So obviously we're not looking for real solutions because there aren't any. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. First of all, I'm going to write 1 plus i in polar form. So to be able to do that, here, here is the steps that I need to take. Suppose we set 1 plus i equal to z, z representing a complex number. And then the modulus for this complex number, which is also called the absolute value of z, can be evaluated by using the coefficient. So if you have z equals a plus bi, then its modulus is going to be the square root of a squared plus b squared. Of course, a and b are real numbers, and r is also a real number. In this case, it is going to be square root of 2, because a is 1, b is 1. Make sense? Now, why do we need r? Because that's going to help us write our complex number in trigonometric form. So here's what we're going to do next. We're going to go ahead and set 1 plus i equal to the following. We're going to take out a square root of 2, which is the modulus. And inside, we do need 1 over square root of 2, right? We can kind of write it at 1 over 2 root 2 plus 1 over root 2i. When you distribute the square root of 2, you're going to get 1 plus i. So you're going to get the exact same thing. But what is nice about this form is that you can go ahead and set this equal to the cosine of an angle, cosine alpha, and set this equal to the sine of an angle, which is sine alpha. And obviously, we can also define tangent alpha here, which kind of helps you a little bit uh, to find, uh, figure out where the angle is. Not the angle, where it is, but it's going to give you an idea. Uh, tangent is one. But I'm going to use cosine. I can just go off of sine and cosine. Notice that sine and cosine are both positive, which means we are in the first quadrant. And the sine of which angle is 1 over root 2, and at the same time, the cosine of which angle is 1 over root 2. And the only angle is going to be pi over 4. Of course, we're talking about an, an angle between 0 and 2 pi. So from here, alpha is equal to pi over 4. But of course, you're allowed to add multiples of 2 pi to this, so we're going to talk about that as well. Make sense so far? We could also do the following to figure out that it's pi over 4. On the coordinate system, we can go ahead and mark this number. 1 plus i is basically represented by the point 1, 1. And 1, 1 is basically one unit away from here and one unit away from here. That is going to make an angle of exactly pi over 4 radians or 45 degrees with the positive x-axis. But instead of calling it the x-axis, in this case, we call it the real axis, and the y-axis becomes the imaginary axis. So our complex number is the real part and an imaginary part. Make sense? So this is one unit. This is one unit. Therefore, uh, the radius or the modulus is going to be square root of 2 from Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so that's just another way to look at it visually. Now, we got our number in this form. Let's go ahead and replace cosine alpha with cosine of pi over 4. So 1 plus i is going to become now. Always write the modulus on the outside. And inside, we're going to have cosine pi over 4 plus i times sine pi over 4. Obviously, this can be uh, simplified or uh, written in a more concise form thanks to Euler. We can basically write any complex number like r times cosine alpha plus i sine alpha as r times e to the power i alpha. Because we have this beautiful relationship between uh, a complex exponential and this complex number. So any complex number pretty much can be written as e to the power i alpha if you just ignore the modulus. Make sense? So this is a really, really nice complex uh, compact form. 
And it's also nice because suppose you have two numbers like e to the i alpha and e to the i beta, like two complex numbers, multiplication and division becomes so much easier. That's why it's a really nice form. Anyways, so let's go ahead and uh, convert our number into that form. That's going to be square root of 2 times e to the power. So notice that this part becomes e to the power i alpha, i times pi over 4. For now, let me write it as a pi over 4, and then we're gonna, later on we're going to talk about the general solution. Okay? So here's what we have so far. I had e to the x equals 1 plus i, but I was able to write 1 plus i as square root of 2 times e to the power i times pi over 4 in exponential form. Great. Now, we can totally forget about 1 plus i and equate these two things and then try to find x from there. Let's go ahead and do that next. So we have now e to the x equals square root of 2 times e to the power i times pi over 4. At this point, I'm thinking, wouldn't it be nice like if we didn't have the square root of 2 there, we would have e to the something equals e to the something else, so we could equate the exponents right away. That's not the case, but that's perfectly fine, because uh, we're, we're going to get rid of the e base by ln-ing both sides. So we're going to take the natural log of both sides, which is ln, and that's going to give us the x directly. And so don't worry about the extra number. And we're going to be using properties of logs here, which says, hey, if ln e to the power x is the same thing as x, and this guy here uh, can be separated because remember we have the rule for logs, like if you have log a, b, it can be written as log a plus log b. And this is true for any base. Let's suppose the base is x in this case. It doesn't matter. We didn't specify it. But uh, it's true for all bases, including the natural log. So we can write this as ln square root of 2 plus ln e to the power i times pi over 4. You don't have to write it as with a dot, like you could just write i pi over 4. But uh, I just want to emphasize that i is being multiplied by the angle, the argument. Okay, great. So this is the answer. Yeah, we're going to do a little bit of work here because we have now the exponent and we can go ahead and move it to the front and ln e is just going to be 1. So x can be written as ln square root of 2 plus i times pi over 4. Again, this is kind of like the specific solution uh, because we didn't talk about the uh, rotations, but if you consider the multiples of 2 pi added to this, then in general we can write the general solution as follows, and that is basically going to conclude this process. So x can be written in general form as ln square root of 2, and by the way, ln square root of 2, if you want, you can also write it as 1 half ln 2, because square root of 2 is basically... 2 to the power 1 half, so we can move the 1 half to the front and just write it like this. It looks a little better, no big deal. Plus, now instead of using pi over 4, I'm just going to write pi over 4 plus 2 and pi. So if you replace n with integers, you're going to get infinitely many solutions. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow. Well, not tomorrow, next time, which is in an hour, with another video. We have three videos today. I hope you enjoyed the um, trigonometry video we did in collaboration. Anyways, uh, until next time, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.